In FLL, base robot is one of the most important things to get right, maybe even the most important thing to get right. However, I've seen many teams and coached many teams that weren't sure what to actually think about when making a base robot. And you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to talk about how to build a base robot and what you should think about. Here are some pictures of some base robots that I've made over the Masterpiece FLL season. These robots have a few things in common. They have two driving wheels and a support wheel. They have a brain. They have three or four motors. And they have flat sides for the robot to be able to square up on. At least one. These, I think, are the most obvious and most striking things that the robots have in common. Some other things we want are we want to be able to see the screen for the Spike Prime EV3 or NXT we're using. We should be able to charge the robot without taking it apart. And we should be able to download to the robot without taking it apart. Although this last one, my NXT, did not have this and this was a bit of an issue. In my video where I talked about turning consistency, I also mentioned that the weight of the robot should be primarily over driving wheels and as little as possible should be over the caster or support wheel. A lot of these things I mentioned are actually not that hard to do. Generally, if you built a robot, you might have gotten a lot of these done without really thinking about them. For example, if your spike crime is not surrounded by a frame, then great, you probably can charge it and download programs to it using a cable without any problems. So why do the robots look so different, though? The thing about base robots is that there isn't a perfect design, and the attachments you make are going to be designed around the base robot you have. So it's more important that you actually get the base robot done in relatively good order than it is to try to make a perfect base robot. The features you decide to have are important, and you have to be selective of which features you want to have on your robot. A little bit like if you were trying to decide what you wanted in a car, do you really need a car that is able to go underwater? Well, unless you're James Bond, probably not. And the same applies to your robot. I'm glad as a James Bond fan that I could find a way to find a teaching moment from one of their movies. Consider that the vast majority of the features on your robot will be trying to score points on the field, which is going to be dealt with by your attachments. The point of this video is actually to explain that you don't need a perfect base robot. You just need a base robot that is good enough, and you need to spend the vast majority of your FL season working on the attachments and the programs that go with it. So if you're a new team then you should actually build a really, really simple base robot. You don't need to have a frame around it. You don't need to be able to accommodate drop-on attachments. You probably want one flat side, but it doesn't need to be four flat sides. And yeah, the other things I mentioned in the video, you want to try to have them. Don't stress too much if you are missing some of them. I've seen a lot of base robots that have a gear, that you drop an attachment onto that would engage this gear. And these are nice and all, but if you're a new FL team, please do not worry about these because it is going to be really hard to actually make an attachment that would work with these for you. What you should do instead is just have the attachment motor exposed and you just directly connect things to the attachment motor and that will make your life way easier. I also want to mention that I think many of these building instructions for base robots use too many parts if you only have a spike prime or a spike prime set and an expansion set. I think it's perfectly fine to build your base robot using instructions if you really need to. I know a lot of people have asked me for instructions to build the robot, the attachments, the programs, and probably a manual also to tell them how to use it, which is obviously not okay. But if you find a robot instruction set on the internet that you like, or base robot, go for it. Now, in that vein, I'm going to share my robot in one day Spike Prime 
base robot because it's really simple and I would recommend it to almost any new FLL team because it saves tons of parts for you to be able to make attachments with them. All right, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you want me to help your FLL team, either for the next season or to prepare for an upcoming competition, email me down below. Also, in the spirit of this video, send me some instructions for some robots and I might put out another video where I tell you all what I think is good or bad about these robots, whether I like them, etc.